Shalom, Elie Kim Cohen, Jews News Briefs, June 12th, 2011, the 10th day of Sivan, the Hebrew calendar. We're back from our Shabbat break, live from Jews' News World Headquarters. We have a jam-packed show today. I hope we can get to everything. Here's our theme song, courtesy of David Dome. <laughs> that never gets old. You know, we've been in the thousands ever since we've gotten this theme song. I don't think there's a coincidence there, do you? All right, our sponsor today is YadEzra.net. Y-A-D-E-Z-R-A.net, a phenomenal organization, Yad Ezra Vashulami, that's the organization. They give food, clothing, shelter, support, anything they can to the needy people in Israel. You're obligated, by the way, to give minimum 10% of your money, 10% of your paycheck to Tzedakah. That's not like up for negotiation. Minimum 10%. So if you're not giving 10%, and you're sort of struggling financially now, maybe look back on the past few years and realize that uh, God is taking money away from you. Uh, if you're going to misuse the money, if you're not going to help out your Jewish brethren, you don't really need the money. So that's more than likely why many of the people in this world are struggling financially right now. You need to give tzedakah. It's a commandment in the Torah. We actually get rewarded for it. Uh, start helping your brothers out and sisters. And this is a great way to start. Yadazer.net, the link is below. All right, so here's a great quote from uh, Grains of Sand. Uh, I don't like it either. Perhaps one day it will change. Not until our government officials return to the roots and learn to be proud God-fearing Jews. How many times have I said this on the show? Until we get leaders that uh, wear kippahs, that uh, learn Torah, that observe Torah, that have morality, that aren't just in it for themselves, that actually listen to the people that voted for them, uh, we're going to struggle. We need leaders in this country that care. We need leaders that... Uh, don't just want to give away, you know, the next tract of land uh, to get a Nobel Prize or some award or, you know, have the world love them. We need leaders that stand strong and that just say, you know what, back off. This is God-given Jewish land. That's it. End of story. All right, so thank you to everybody out there that's been sharing the show. We're very, we're growing a lot. We have over a thousand hits a day on YouTube, probably a few times as many on Facebook. Uh, if everyone just clicks share right now, if you send it to one new friend a day, this could really snowball because as you know, our goal is 100,000 people and I will not rest until we get that. And by the way, thank you Debbie for dressing me up in glasses today. She's my stylist. She said that I might start appealing to a more intellectual audience. I told her, Debbie, every intellectual that I know is a complete tool. But she said, if it gets you one new viewer, then it's worth it. So thank you, Debbie, it is worth it. All right, so today in Jewish history, uh, unfortunately, today, 1943, which isn't that long ago, people. This isn't stuff from the Middle Ages. This is 1943. This is 68 years ago. Uh, the Jewish community at Berezhani, Ukraine, was led away on Shabbat. 1,180 Jews were uh, shot in a mass grave in 1943. We can't just say never again, we actually have to mean it because it's happening again right now. Uh, everywhere in the world, they're, they're trying to ban circumcision, they're trying to ban kosher food, uh, they're trying to rip away Israel from us. These things are happening again now. Open your eyes and see it. All right, today's Jewish quote is from Eli Wiesel. Everyone knows who he is, Holocaust survivor. I marvel at the, resist that the resilience of the Jewish people. Their best characteristic is their desire to remember. No other people has such an obsession with memory. So if you want to say never forget, then remember what happened to you. Remember what happened to your ancestors. Pretty much every single generation has had some sort of tragedy. There's a reason for that. We all need to unite under the umbrella of Torah. And it all has to happen in Israel. All right, so the Torah tidbit before you get to our nauseating top story. God says in this week's parsha, send forth for yourself. What does that mean? Why couldn't he just tell us to do something? He didn't want us to do this. He didn't want the spies to go out and scout the land because God can see everything. He knew this was going to be an absolute failure for the Jewish people. So he said, send forth for yourself. Meaning, I don't want you to do it, but you have free will. God makes sure that everyone in this world has free will. That is a basic foundation of this world, is that at all times, you have the right to say, I want to do this, or I want to do that. I want to follow Torah, I want to not follow Torah. I want to disgrace God, I want to follow God. So that's what this means. Send forth for yourself. You have free will right this second, and I hope you're using that free will to share the link with your Facebook friends. All right, our top story <laughs> infuriates me. Uh, it really, really infuriates me. We all know Jonathan Potter has been rotting in jail in America for being an alleged spy since, I think, 1985. Um, any other person that's had a similar thing, their maximum sentence is usually between two to four years, and then they're released. Jonathan Bauer's been riding there for about 25 years. So he's not well at all. He's been physically ill for a long, long time. Now his father, according to his wife, is on the verge of dying. Jonathan Bauer called his wife Esther, 
crying, like, uncontrollably, saying uh, that he wants to see his father. Uh, and then his wife started crying because, you know, she, she's caught up in the emotion. So, Hussein Obama personally, personally, had the Lockerbie Bomber. He was instrumental, the White House was, in releasing the Lockerbie Bomber. If you don't know what the Lockerbie Bomber was, Google it. Uh, he was the one that blew up a Pan Am flight that had tons and tons of Americans on it. Uh, he's a Libyan terrorist, and he was released. Uh, he was released because of poor health. The White House released a bomber that blew up a plane with Americans because of poor health. Jonathan Pollard, who gave Israel information that was instrumental in helping the national security of not only Israel, but of the Western world as well, is still rotting in jail. Do you see what I just said? Can you comprehend what is going on here? The Lockerbie Bomber freed personally by the White House. They were instrumental. Jonathan Pollard, Jew, rotting in jail since, I think, 1985. No president's done anything. And you know the Israeli government's done nothing either. That's my top story. I hope this makes you as livid as it makes me that the White House just doesn't care. They just, no matter how many senators, congressmen, politicians, whatever, say, it's time to free this guy. This guy's not well. He's paid his crime. He didn't even do anything that was bad. Let him go. Nobody lets him go. I want to know what we have to say about this. That's our poll question. What do you think about Jonathan Pollard rotting in jail when the Lockerbie Bomber is not running in jail anymore and he killed hundreds and hundreds of people? So on Friday's show, I asked you, what did you think about gay people uh, telling us that we now need to accept them, tolerate them, uh, have mercy on them, all these things. Uh, and if we don't, we're pretty much bigoted. They have this big gay pride parade, and for the first time, religious Jews, uh, quote unquote religious Jews, uh, took part. And they were so proud of the fact that they're desecrating one of the biggest things in Torah. So I had a ton of quotes uh, that came in. I'm going to read five of them. Uh, gay and Torah don't go together, they are unobservant, referring to the people in this march. Disgusting, totally against the Torah. Don't be a hypocrite and call yourself religious, just be gay. Actually, you don't need to get. You need to get over your shtetl orthodoxy, meaning, you know, orthodox Judaism, and accept the fact that some people are born straight and others are born gay. If you're saying that, then you're just denying the whole Torah, because why would God make someone gay if he also calls it an abomination? You know, having someone born with an attraction to the same sex, fine. I have an attraction to, you know, anger, to other things. But the point of Torah and the point of, you know, being a Jew is to work on yourself and to not engage in things that you have an inclination to. To not engage in things you have an inclination to! Kidding. Uh, so, you don't have to sleep with a guy or sleep with a girl. You don't have to be gay. Uh, there's hundreds of people out there, thousands, that have said, you know what, I do have this attraction, but I'm actually going to work on being attracted to the same sex. And they end up getting married, they live happy lives, they have tons of kids, so it is possible. And the last comment is from some stupid idiot, I think it's awesome. And the Froom community, meaning the observant community, has to wake up and realize that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender folks exist in their communities. Okay? Let's move on before I throw up. Uh, speaking of throwing up, uh, now Russell Crowe, uh, some pathetic loser actor that's pretty much always drunk also has to get into the whole circumcision thing. He says that circumcision is barbaric and stupid. And he also said that he is a God-fearing person, but he will not accept um, how some people have twisted his words and it's come to be the circumcision that we know of today. Uh, we've been circumcising people for 4,000 years. So it's the same circumcision now that it was back then. Um, to say that this is our misinterpretation is completely ridiculous because A, it's in the Jewish Torah. This has nothing to do with Gentiles. So, uh, this is a completely anti-Semitic quote. This also, you know, offends Muslims out there because two billion Muslims also circumcise their children. Uh, I don't know why Russell Crowe has to open up his mouth. I have two words for Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! What are these actors and, and athletes have to open their mouths? Shut up! No one cares what you have to say! You know, most of these people aren't even good at what they do! Keep your mouth shut when it involves Jewish things and you're a Gentile! We don't care! It does make for good viewership, though. Alright, so here's something that 
I found it absolutely insane. A lecturer at Ben Gurion University, uh, this is what he said. I call on the world to come and help break these scoundrels' necks. He's talking about right wing activists. Breaking the necks of right wing activists. This person teaches in an Israeli university. Imagine if a right wing professor said that we need to break left wing people's necks. This guy would be fired. He would be ostracized. They'd be throwing vegetables at him. He'd be deported from Israel. Uh, left wing piece of garbage says this. Nothing. No suspension. No, you know, no nothing, no fine, no firing, nothing. This guy said break the necks of 30,000 uh, fellow Jews, and not one thing has happened to this person. If this guy's not fired, uh, I'm going to be absolutely livid. This is happening. The, the universities in Israel, by and large, are absolutely pathetic. They're the most left-wing. Uh, there are some great professors out there. There are some good schools out there. But... <laughs> The ones that uh, are the most notorious are the most notorious. They're absolutely pathetic. Guys like this probably have tenure. Nothing has happened to this person. He said, break the necks of the right wing. All right, let's move on before I have an aneurysm. Uh, Hamas summer camp is opening up. Uh, it combines Islamic indoctrination, paramilitary training, and social activities, and are set to begin at... <laughs> Again this year, as United Nations camps have been set afire by them, uh, they've been t t torched, burned to the ground. I actually applied to Hamas summer camp. Uh, I got a letter back from them. Uh, the gist of it was pretty much, dirty Jew, uh, I think it'll be a conflict of interest for you to come here. Because yes, you might enjoy the swimming and soccer, but you are not going to enjoy suicide bombing on our So you might be better off in a camp in Maine. Thank you, Hamas, for actually responding to my inquiry, but unfortunately I will not be attending camp there. Alright, so my buddies in the U.S. government are now waiting for an Israeli response to the negotiating framework for peace deal. Uh, pretty much the U.S. stance is Israel put a gun to your head and blow your brains out because we want you to go back to borders that are completely indefensible, that have never been borders. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has already stood firm on this. I'm hoping now he's not buckling under the pressure like most Israeli politicians tend to do. Um, the absolutely amazing part of this is that the quote-unquote Palestinian Authority is saying that if uh, the U.S. vetoes uh, their bid for a unilateral declaration of a state, that they are going to go back to the 1947 U.N. partition resolution that they... <laughs> that was, what, 64-something years ago? They... <laughs> They refused this thing 64 years ago, which was the partitioning of Israel into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Now they're saying that if all else fails, they're going to go back and accept that. 64 years later, after not only did they not accept it, but they ended up invading Israel because of it, now they're saying that it's, uh, it might be an option that they're willing to look into. This is so pathetic and stupid, this whole process is, that if all else fails, they're going to go back. And they're going to support something that 64 years ago, they did not support. I hope you're laughing at home. I hope you guys all have your Ralph puke bag at home. And are just seeing the absolute nonsense that is in the world today. Alright. Happy time story. Happy, happy. Uh, apparently a lot of Jews in Kiddush clubs, and Kiddush is what we have after davening on Shabbat. Uh, my cousin was a Kiddush guy. There's a lot of alcohol that is served at this. Um, the Kiddush clubs are now declaring a boycott on Scottish whiskey, since Scotland is declaring a boycott on us, uh, including Shivas Regal, which was a premium scotch. So that's my happy time story, is that Jews are actually standing up for themselves now and boycotting people that are boycotting us. All right, let's play a little Jew or not a Jew. Kevin Euclid, Red Sox player, my favorite uh, baseball team. Is he Jewish? No, his father is Jewish, his mother is not Jewish. My mom actually plays Mahjong with his cousin, but Kevin Euclid is technically not thick. He's officially not a Jew because his mom is not Jewish. Um, all right, so they're going to build 6,000 homes for Orthodox Jews. Uh, members of the Hare Krishna sect had a little problem with this, uh, which means that we don't really care. So there's going to be more homes for Jews. Uh, and more news, quote unquote Palestinians uh, torched a Jewish site and burned Jewish holy books. If we did this to them, the whole world would be outraged. No one really cares when they do this to us. We have to go, we're running out of time. 
Thank you so much for watching. It's not news unless it's shoes news. Please share this link. Everybody have a great day.